Like say shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh Shem El Shah. Also give a double honest to the elders of GMS and honest to Akim and peace and blessings to you, brothers and sisters that listen to Hopeful Elect. And this video is kind of follow up to the last video I did on um resisting the devil and he shall flee from you. You know, this lesson going into the when the evil spirit leaves a man, and this mainly goes into guys who fell out, man. Because they weren't doing what the scripture was saying. And I'm starting to see you guys pop back up, man. You know, and trying to you know, get in contact with brothers. Listen, man. <laughs> you guys should have known what you was getting yourself involved in, man. This is a very, very serious thing, man. This this thing that we're involved in is the life and death, man. When you come into this thing, you make an oath to Yahweh by Shemel Shah. Okay, and you can't break an oath, man. Alright? You you made an unspoken oath to the most high. The most high didn't just give you this. This thing, this truth came at a cost, which was the Lord's blood. All right. That's the reason why your mind is open to all the mysteries, man. And for you to forsake that, I'm going to read the scripture because we all know the parable in Matthew 12, 43 to 45, brief, briefly paraphrasing it, tells you when the evil spirit leave, leaves a man, he go about looking um, in other dry places. Meaning what? We all had demons on us before we came into this truth, man. All right. When you start doing it, it says he comes back, you start empty, swept, and garnished. You start doing the right thing, keeping the commandments, having faith, charity. But then he goes and gets seven other demons more powerful than himself, which seven is completion. A complete, a complete amount of demons or spirits, man. All right? Then he go back to his old house or that old body or that old tabernacle. And if that person is not on point, then it says what? The last state of the man is worse than the first, man. Okay, you become a complete reprobate, man, when you fall out the knowledge, man. And we've I've seen it. You know, other brothers seen it. When that person fall out, they, they're not even the same. They can't even say the name of the most high anymore, man. And they start getting involved in all of these weird doctrines. Like the scripture says, they return back to their vomit. <laughs> right? That's a scary thing. Alright, that's why I'm going to read some precepts. Matter of fact, let me get that scripture, 2 Peter 2.14. Let's just do a quick lesson on this. 2 Peter 2.14. Yeah, natural brute beast made to be taken. Let me start at verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery. Okay, that they cannot cease from sin, which is breaking the law. Law, statutes, and commandments. That's where they fell out. But guile and unstable souls. So if a man is, is an unstable soul, that means when you go back to the parable of Mark, the fourth chapter, okay, that one of those seeds that fell by the wayside, that didn't fall on good ground, meaning what they didn't truly believe, man, or they became impatient because things wasn't happening fast enough. All right. And the scripture tells you what, man, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Is it you down with your high Shem El Shah and you're going to endure or you're going to be a castaway and be a reprobate? In heart, they have exercise with covetous practices like um, Paul got on Demas. Tell you that he said Demas forsook him because he wanted to be a friend of the world, man. All right. He was covetous. He desired things. And especially you guys who fell out, you desire what the oppressor have, man. Okay. You want it all right now. She says covetous practices, and it's the point, cursed children, okay, which have forsaken a right way and have gone astray from the way of Balaam and the son of Basal, who love the wages of unrighteousness, man. The wages of unrighteousness, man. Which was going into Balaam, which that was an interesting story. Um, Balak wanted to pay Balaam to put curses on Israel. And the scripture says, no enchantment shall work against Israel, man. Okay, but an Israelite becomes cursed when he forsakes Yahweh by Shemel Shah. And that's exactly what happened to you guys who fell out, man. Okay, you're consumed by those those spirits, man. And matter of fact, um, just like Judas Iscariot. Before he betrayed the Lord, it says Satan entered into Judas Iscariot. That's Luke, the 22nd chapter. All right. Because you guys weren't what trimming your lamps. Matter of fact, let me get that. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Let 
Let me see. This is the parable. First one. Let me see. I read one. One thirteen. Then he, the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. We know the bridegroom is the Lord. The virgins represent what? You brothers in the knowledge, man. The ten virgins, man. Five are wise and the five foolish is going to go into it. As the scripture talks about the bride and the bridegroom, all right? And five of them were wise, which represent the elect, and five were foolish. You guys have fell out, man. All right? It says, then the foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So if you have no oil, you can't keep that fire burning or that lamp going. But the oil is the understanding. All right? And the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So you guys who fell out, you guys that's lukewarm, okay? You know what I'm saying? You said in your heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, man. Um, at midnight, there was a cry made, all right? Which right now we're approaching the night, okay? Esau's new world order, man. Which is going to be the famine of the word. The midnight is Yahweh Shai's second coming. And the daytime is the kingdom, all right? It says, the, um, at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go we out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. So we know the bridegroom is coming, man. We're trimming our lamps, man. Okay? Which means what? You're removing or cutting things off, man. That does not matter, man. All right? Anything that hinders your light from burning or your light from shining before men, you have to cut it off, man. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us your oil. Oh, you understand it. All right? Trying to get back in the picture. For our lamps are gone out. Like I say, you guys trying to come back. But it, what are the wise saying? This is what we're telling y'all. But the wise answer saying, not so, lest there be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them and buy and sell for yourselves. Go work out your own salvation, man. Go figure this thing out on your own, man. All right? The script says to buy the truth and sell it not, man. Which means what? Get fully involved with it. Sell means what? Do not give it away. You guys gave it away. All right. It says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they were ready, went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Which that's what the chariots. Matter of fact, prove that quick. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 20. So the brothers that's trimming their lamps going to be safe. We're going to enter the, um, the chambers of the chariots. Isaiah 26, 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, the chariots. And shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. The indignation is what? That nuclear destruction. All right. So the wise going to get beamed up and the foolish, they're going to get burned, man. Because they weren't trimming their lamps. They didn't understand the, the severity of this thing, man. All right. Like it all goes back to that Matthew, the 12th chapter. Those complete number of demons consumed y'all, man. All right, and that's a very serious offense, man. Because, matter of fact, let me read First Samuel sixteen. Because, like I said, it happened to Judas Iscariot. Satan entered into him, and also Saul as well. First Samuel sixteen fourteen. It says, "But the spirit of Yahweh Shemuel Shad departed from Saul." And an evil spirit from the Haba Shemel Shah troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from the Most High troubleth thee. So that spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding departed from Saul. And the Most High gave him what? Demons. <laughs> and that was it. Saul went downhill from there, man. All right? He was finished, man. The Most High took what? His mercy away from him. That's why King David, after he committed adultery and he wrote Psalms 51, he said, What? Create in me a clean heart, O Most High, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me, man. Because he saw what happened to Saul, man. And that's the scary thing when a Most High takes that spirit away from you, man. Okay? That hedge is gone, man. Alright? And like the scripture says, you become cursed children man 
And what did Yahweh Shah to say about that, man? Matthew chapter 12. So, you know, we got to trim our lamps, definitely. And <laughs> this ain't the time to be getting weak, man. All right? Because what did the Lord say in Matthew chapter 12, verse 4 to 31? He said, Wherefore I say unto you, All men of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. We're going to go into what that is. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, okay, the words of the Most High has been brought to you through His Son, it shall not be forgiven of Him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So how do you guys blaspheme the Holy Spirit? Let's get Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4, man. It's going into you guys, Hebrews 6 and 4. For it's impossible for those who were once enlightened, which means what? You received the Holy Spirit, man. Okay, you know what 99.9% .9 of people on the planet Earth don't know. Okay, you actually understand the words of the Heavenly Father. That means you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. So scripture says it's impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the Heavenly gift. Okay. And we're partakers of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's what that is, man. And have tasted the good word of the Most High, because that's what the Holy Spirit is, and the powers of the world to come. You understood the mysteries. You understood the prophecies. You understood what's coming to Esau. You understood that you was going to get the kingdom and all that. If they shall fall away to renew again unto repentance, seeing they crucify themselves, the Son of, man, the, Son of the Most High afresh, and put him... To open shame, man. So if you fall away, you put your Yahweh Shai to open shame. Okay, you blaspheme the Holy Spirit because you tasted the good word of the Most High and the powers of the world to come. You forsook that. Okay, you made light of the Lord's sacrifice. All right? Now, you're going to have some examples. The scripture does talk about the prodigal son. <laughs> but who wants to take that chance, man? All right? 99% <laughs> of guys who fall out, that's it, man. All right, the Most High took his mercy away from you, just like he did to Saul, man. You see? So, you know, like I said, man, this is a quick lesson. You know what I'm saying? This is a very serious thing, man. Like I said in the last video, Satan is that main adversary. And especially in this last hour, man, he's looking to take guys out, man. Okay? That's what the scripture says, man. Ecclesiastes, the second chapter. So you guys who fell out, <laughs> like the scripture says, go we out and buy for yourselves. Okay? Sirach, the second chapter. It says, um, Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 14. It says, warn to you that have lost patience. They were tired of suffering. They were tired of waiting. All right? What will he do when the Lord shall visit you? What you going to do, man? The scripture says a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. And you see guys who fell out, they, they stopped going out. You know, um, they start getting involved in, like I said, in these wayward doctrines, man. All right. Stop believing in these bizarre books and different texts. Some of them go back into the Christian church. And like I realized, a lot of them can't even say the name no more. The Most High took all that away from them. Man. All right. The last state of the man is worse than the first. All right. They have all kind of spirits and demons on them, man. All right. And if you do feel yourself getting weak, man, you got to, like I said, pray and <clears throat> pray and fast, man. Like Yahweh Shai said, and I'll close it out on this, Revelation, the second chapter. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things say he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walk into the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, Yahweh Shai. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and hast tried them which say the apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And has borne and has patience and for my name's sake labored and has not fainted. So the Lord is commending them for the things they were doing good. But he said what? Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou has left thy first love. What's your first love? This truth, man. Okay. This is your first priority. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent. And that goes for all of us, man. 
All right. Trim your lamps, man. Scripture says, remember, therefore, for whence thou art fallen and repent, turn back, man. Okay. And do the first works, which is this knowledge, man, this truth. All right. The work, the videos that we put up, the highways and hedges is the main ministry, charity, brotherhood. That's the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place and accept thy repent. So you're going to take the entire truth from you, man. Like the ten virgins, their lamp went out. Okay, the Lord took that candlestick away from them, man. All right? And once that happened, that's it. <laughs> All right? So like I said, man, you know, we always got to keep examining ourselves. Like the scripture says, trim our lamps, man. Because we want to be saved when the bride will crumb. With that, I'm going to say, giving our praise. Yahweh, Shalom.